Joining us now, of course, she is the head coach at Cal, is a former standout player at Cal as well. I speak of our good friend Chelsea Spencer, who joins us back here on In the Circle. Uh, I know you're dealing with weather, but otherwise, uh, how are you doing over there out west? Oh, it's all good, whether it's rain or shine. Uh, the sun that the sun came up today, so that's always a good uh, good start. So, um, yes, thank you for having me, Eric. Um, I really appreciate being on your show. Uh, always a good one. How did the fall go for you and your team there? Uh, obviously, last year, you know, you kind of flirted with, you know, probably being in the mix for the NCAA tournament. If you get maybe a couple of different results go different way, you might be in the tournament. Uh, so you built some progress there. How how did the fall go? Uh, fall went great. Uh, you know, we did uh, learn a lot from last year. Um, there were four crucial losses that we took uh, with 100-plus RPI teams uh, that if we take those – uh, those games um, uh, back and we, we get W's out of them. I think we're in. Uh, so we were on that, on that bubble, on that cusp, uh, long season, uh, COVID hit Berkeley hard with uh, Berkeley public health. So endurance wise, our student athletes, I think they still had a little bit of, of COVID hangover because we weren't able to participate that, that much in 2020, 2021 didn't set up, up well, you know, endurance and training wise for our second year. Um, but you know, our third year is off to a great start. Uh, we had, a, a great fall, our, our numbers, our testing numbers. We, you know, and, and I do a lot of strength and conditioning. Uh, I think our program's base is is developed in the weight room um and uh, on the football field softball field uh trying to make us the the biggest fastest strongest uh coming from oregon um uh, was a, a big life lesson um uh, uh from uh one of the greatest in my opinion uh strength and conditioning coaches out there uh coach coach dylan mark dylan uh, he's now at arkansas as a uh, as a sports science uh, uh mentor uh there but uh you know, we, 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 we lifted heavy, um, you know, Sona, Sona Halajian is one of the strongest athletes I've ever coached. I mean, good Lord. She's like deadlifting like 450. I mean, I can't believe how some, strong some of these student athletes are, uh, you know, giving them uh, an area to succeed um, <clears throat> in the weight room with our strength and conditioning coach, TJ uh, Owens. He's done a great job, uh, you know, building our speed, um, building our, our, um, our foundation in the weight room. And then, you know, taking that on the field uh, with, uh, you know, our eight games, uh, we lost one to uh, Sac State. You know, it's going to be a battle every year with Sac State. They're a great program. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, we're, we're excited. They got some good uh, athletes um, as well. Uh, Northern California kids, you know, that's where, uh, you know, we, we get them. Uh, and, you know, the battle of the Bay continues with us, Stanford, Davis, you know, we, we want to be the best in our area. And uh, I think we're on our way to, uh, um, you know, building, um, you know, our future for, for the 2023 season. What have you learned about yourself as far as being a head coach now that you didn't know when you first took over the program? I don't, you know, I, I think patience, um, uh, understanding how to inspire people after lo losing. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm like the worst loser uh, in, <laughs> in, in the country. Um, and just being able to, you know, uh, have that, uh, that patience and understanding of how, how we're building building uh and looking at the big picture uh and the vision of our program that you know I've set out along with our coaches is is something that you know I've been building especially as a young mom I mean it's really uh right now in, in my life I have two children who um are testing me I mean every day I'm getting tested by my son Miles and I'm like learning so much every day uh definitely bringing that onto the field of her learning being more patient uh as a as a person and as a coach and a, as a mom and, um, you know, I, I think that that's the biggest uh, transition I've had as a, as an assistant going to um, uh, going to a head coach because Coach White, uh, work wise, he put a lot on me. He, he, he prepared me well to be a head coach. Now it's, you know, you know, my job to, um, you know, uh, have that patience with people. Yeah, he brought you up. Uh, we just had him on recently on the show. He brought you up specifically about that and, and kind of getting you ready to be a head coach because he knew what your goals were. We'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, I want to talk about your roster. You bring a lot of players back. 
Uh, and I want to start offensively because you offensively hit 291 last year. You saw big improvements, had some good power, 57 home runs. Give me your overall thoughts on your offense this year. Um, you know, we want to get better. Uh, every day is uh, is uh, the day that we're going to bring our best, you know, um, and whether it's practice, whether it's game, the coaching staff, down to the players uh, from my administration, you know, we're just trying to give our best effort every day. And, uh, you know, we have goals that we uh, that we've set. Uh, we want to hit over, you know, 300. But, you know, I, I look more at on base percentage. If if we're going to get on base, you know, OPS, everybody, you know, understands what OPS is. But, you know, being able to hit with power and being on base is what we're going to try to do this year and, um, you know, implement our, uh, our, 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 our fast kids, you know, every, every year is these ebbs and flows of, of lineups, right? You have some years where you'll have speed, some more years where you'll have a, a lot more power. Um, we're kind of in a year that we have a little bit more, uh, power hitters than we do speedsters. Uh, and I keep, uh, you know, giving it to Coach Becker, like, where's my slappers at? You know, where's my speedster? <laughs> she she even gives me a lineup card that says, you know, hit bombs, not bump bunts. You know, we have like our inside jokes. She likes some bombs. You know, she's a really good offensive coach right now. Um, really tuning in uh, to her best game uh, as a coach. I think she's done a great job over the fall with our hitters. Um, and uh, you know, it's uh, it's a good time to be a bear offensively, uh, starting from one to you know the end of our roster about oh man how many do we have this year 26 um you know we're all getting better uh and uh um i i think that you know we're going to take that next step to you know be a better offensive club but what what's the reality is you know you can hit all the bombs you want you know we got to pitch and play defense better uh that's our that was our biggest um uh you know uh you know uh area of growth for this year is to do what what the numbers the numbers game say you're supposed to be good at you're supposed to be good at pitching you're supposed to be good at defense and you're supposed to hit a little bit you know obviously we want to hit a little bit more but uh you know pitching in, in defense is where we really honed in this fall you mentioned obviously your power game you mentioned Sonia earlier she had 13 homers 43 rbis last year McKenna Smith who we've talked about had 13 homers, 39 RBIs. Just talk about some of the, the, them two and, you know, some of the leaders on the offensive end uh, the, for your team. Obviously, we had four all-conference players uh, last year. Well, three and then, you know, uh, one on the all-freshman team. So, you know, all-conference player. We got Acacia Anders. Well, I'll start at the top. You know, uh, I don't know who's going to lead off, either Tatum or McKenna. Um, uh, those two uh, are a, a pretty good one-two punch. Uh, I'd like them to be faster, but they're not. Uh, McKenna uh, is uh, uh, not not a speedster by any means. She thinks she is. I hope she's listening to this podcast. Uh, uh, she needs to get a little faster, um, but but she can hit the ball in every part of the yard. Uh, she can lay down a great bunt. Uh, she can hit, um, you know, when with runners in scoring position. Um, and, and then Tatum... Uh, Tatum, oh man, she's improved her game a ton. I don't know how you can with, I think she hit over 400 last year. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, and uh, she has the speed to drop a bunt, a uh, slap, and, you know, make the defense uh, really think about where they need to play her. Uh, she can hit for power. Uh, you know, the the, the pull side the infield can't play her two in because uh, she can hit it down your throat. I mean, I, I know what it's like to play corner uh, against Crystal Bustos. Uh, that girl in the pro league, man, she could drop a bun on you or she can, yeah. uh, you know, hit it at you as hard as she can. You know, it's it's tough, especially with a left handed uh, hitter. If she, they can hit, you know, pull side uh, ground balls hard, you, you don't know where to play them. Uh, then you got, you know, Acacia Anders, who is one of our. Uh, one of our younger players uh, that, you know, that killed it last year. She was a staple in our lineup uh, that, you know, can also hit for power, can also bunt, uh, can also slap as well. Uh, she does a better job hitting the ball uh, than she does uh, being a triple threat. Uh, but she uh, she won the game against just a solid player, great mentality that, um, you know, in the games where, you know, she's got a high heartbeat, she knows how to calm herself down and, and, and uh, really uh, – really be able to be, you know, in the moment, in the process, process oriented uh, athlete. And then you got, you know, those three will be my, probably my top three. Then you have Sona, uh, Sona Halajian to, um, you know, bat four or five, somewhere around there. Um, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know more, 
I have never, other than Veronica Nelson, okay, I have never seen a kid hit a ball farther sometimes. The one she hit off Maggie Ballant in uh, San Diego was one of the farthest balls I've ever seen. You know, she's the kind of a kid that's a swing or miss, uh, but we don't care. You know, we know that the the, the students uh, and, the, and, the, and the players who, who hit, you know, with power can also strike out a lot. And we're not going to we're not going to not want to strike out uh, this year, uh, not either last year, you know, you either swing or you don't. Um, I don't care about swinging misses. Um, obviously if you swing and miss too much, you're not going to be in the lineup. Right. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Sona is one that is uh, also can also drop a bunt, but I don't like her dropping bunts because she, she's got wheels, uh, you know, because, you know, she is also uh, our best pitcher, uh, you know, so she's um, our number one. Uh, she's uh, the heart of our lineup. She's, uh, energy wise, uh, a leader. Um, and, uh, she is one of our captains on this team. So she's taken that captain role, uh, really serious this year and is doing a great job. Um, some of our freshmen who, um, are standouts this fall is Tiana Bell. She led our team in hitting, uh, I'm not sure where she's going to be in the lineup, but she had an absolute monstrous fall hitting like 1.7 OPS, uh, over 600, uh, batting average and can, vacuum up a ball uh, at third base um she's someone to really look out for i expect her to have a fantastic year uh not only this year but she's gonna be um uh she's gonna be maybe an all-american at some point in her career a as well as elon butler um elon butler is pushing tatum for shortstop i don't know who's gonna play shortstop right now it's a good problem to have um uh, elon she uh came in uh hit i don't know top top three in our lineup as well this fall obviously in the fall you don't see the same pitching as you do in the pack 12 so we'll see it uh with these uh freshmen uh coming in who's gonna who's gonna uh you know really uh fight out for those top positions but i i, I foresee elon butler to be one of the starters as well yeah is this the deepest uh roster that you had because i know in the past when we've you've been on you've talked about one of the, the goals and challenges when you took over is building depth you know, because you feel that, you know, if we have depth, you don't, you know, it kind of keeps the players fresh and, and helps them succeed at a higher level. Do you feel you're at the depth where you like it to be? Are you close where you want it to be? I think we have too many people on roster right now uh, in terms of, you know, depth. Um, uh, I think happy cows produce good milk. So, you know, I want depth in every position, but I don't want too much. And right now we have a little too much, but that's okay because last year we had, McKenna out for 13 games. Uh, maybe our season is uh, different uh, at, at the end if McKenna didn't miss 13 games due to an injury. Uh, same thing with Sona. She had a ball off her face. She was out a little bit. Um, and maybe she wasn't out, but she was definitely um, at the top of her game at that moment. And then she had that injury. It, anybody getting hit in the face. I've seen Jenna Lilly getting hit in the face. I've seen Miranda Ellish get in the face. Sona got hit in the face. It kind of like changes you a little bit at first um you know and and um uh it, it's tough so we didn't have much depth now we have six pitchers um uh on the mound uh Anna Anna Reimers got hurt last year that was killer uh in practice and uh out for the whole year um and well not the whole year but we we try to get her in and some she just wasn't the same either so she's been really really working uh on the mound uh, I'll get to that later but yes we have much more depth this year um, it is a much scarier lineup uh, as a whole uh, um, in terms of if we do get injured, we're definitely going to be okay. Uh, one through 26, like I said, I'm confident in um, in every single one of these athletes to to get the job done. And um, I'm excited because uh, it, it's, it's one of our, uh, as of late, you know, one of our deepest and most talented lineups I've seen a Cal, a Cal lineup. It's huge. Uh, I, I want to ask you about defense because you mentioned alluded to it earlier that you've been working a lot on that in the fall. Last year, you made 63 years. I've known you now long enough and I've seen you play long enough to know that you're not that bugged you the whole offseason. Uh, and you're regarded as one of the great defensive minds in the sport. Going back to it, it, your coaching at, you know, when you're at Oregon and Texas, that that was your what you're known for as well as a player. We, we always talk about improving offenses and developing hitters and just recruiting better offensive players. Same thing with pitchers. How do you improve defense? Is that something that takes longer time uh, to develop great defensive teams? I mean, take me through that process of developing a good defense. Well, it starts with the pitcher, right? You're like, 
Like if you have a really good pitcher who hits their spots, who gets swing and misses, you're going to have a better defense. I mean, you look at Florida, right? They always have a great defense, but they always have a great pitcher. Usually rise ball pitchers, swing and misses. As a defender, you're going to play drop ball pitchers differently than you pitch or than you play rise ball pitchers. It's just innate, right? If you have a heavy drop baller, and we do in Archie, right? You're going to get more errors. You're going to get more balls put in play. Um, and, you know, one of the things that we, we we noticed over the course of last year is we had way too many wild pitches. That's where it starts, is that if if you have a pitcher that's not really hitting your spots, how do you play defense behind that, right? Because you're, you're, you're not anticipating well. Defense is the ability to look inside the crystal ball and tell where the future is going to be. So many times in defense, baseball, you know, football, like why was that? Why was Derek Jeter at home plate on that cut? Because he knew he had to be there. He knew he needed to be there. Like he could see the future. So, you know, if as defenses, if we need to get better, we're going to need to be able to tell the future and it starts on the mound is it a drop in? Is it a change up? Is it a drop out? Is it a rise ball in? Is it a rise ball away? Is it curveball? You know, things like that are is the ability to anticipate the future, right? So that's where it starts on the mound, hitting locations, being able to keep your your mindset, your 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 moxie in tough situations. So we 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 tried to create some some pressure for our pitchers in terms of you know what does create pressure? You know, you know what as coaches you got to create you got to create pressure that emulates the game, but there's nothing like game pressure. So what, right. Ha- right? You know, it's, it is tough. So, you know, you know, more scrimmages, you know, what I like, what I think creates pressure um, in practice is like time, you know, like, uh, are you, are we putting the radar on them in the game where they can see it, it kind of messes with their, you know, with their brain a little bit, uh, just being able to put them in si- their different situations on the mound then we move to the defense, right? Am I training them right? Uh, being able to uh, cheat to balls without tipping it to the batter. You know, I'm always watching that stuff as, are you tipping the, the the pitch? You know, make sure we have a lot of film on there, you know, at Oregon and at, and at Texas, I was very blessed. We had so many camera angles at Cal. We, we don't have that. So, you know, we're trying to be as, um, you know, as, uh, you know, creative as we can, uh, you know, with technology, once we get our new field, it'll be different. Um, but, you know, being able to uh, bring in athletes who fit my mold, develop the player, you know, I have, you know, you got to develop the player in athletics, academics, and, and, you know, in leadership, right? And, you know, as you, as you develop players, you know, your player, like the type of players that you coach, and, and that have the, the tools that you think are successful, uh, you know, I think that we're in a better spot, you know, defensively, but it, it definitely starts on the mound. You know, I always, as a defender, I'm like, it always starts with the defense. No, I've, <laughs> you go as your pitchers go. I always thought I was the best, but it's, it, I've, I've been lucky to play behind some of the best in the world and Kat Osterman. Um, I've been able to play with the best in the game, uh, Kelly Anderson, Jocelyn Forrest, who uh, were pretty, um, disciplined um pitchers who could change speeds and um christina thorson can't believe i forgot her um who who could um you know dominate in the circle and then trust us on the defensive end you know and i think we're on our way i definitely think we're on our way uh we were um coaching changes hard not just for the student athletes but the coaches too uh, we're all we're all learning you know growing um it's part of our core values and you know getting better every day bringing our best Sounds to me like you've been texting some of your former uh, teammates pictures and saying thank you, <laughs> right? It sounds to me like if you texted Cat Osmer and Cat just want to remind, just want to say thank you again, made me a great, better defensive player, gave me all this credit because you struck out fifteen in a game. Made me look good, you know. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> she strikes out, I get a ball or two. I just make the play I need to make, and uh, you know that's why I tell them, you know, I don't need you to be this like. I mean, you remember Nebraska had a kid in 2013 who wasn't like the typical shortstop but good god she was so good at every single play that was hit right out of her the routine play she just sucked it up like a a hoover vacuum and and beat us at oregon um that year and um in the super regional and uh that, that was a lesson to be learned that 
you know, you don't, you don't need to look like the typical shortstop. You know, I obviously right. have my, um, my type of athlete that I, I like to recruit, but man, you can get it done if you just do your job. And that's our, that's our goal this year is just do your job. And that way you can look to the left and to the right, to your, to your, to your people that, that then you can help them do your job. If you're not doing your job, if I'm not doing my job, how am I going to help other people do their job? I just got to get my job done. Right. Yeah. Well, that, this is very refreshing because like I've heard always talk, you know, defense in the past when they've had a dominant pitcher strikeout, they, they would say, well, you know, the challenge of being a defense player is being ready because you don't get a lot of action on the ball. But clearly that that was a smoke screen. You'd rather have that problem than the opposite problem where you got too many balls coming your way. So that this has been very revealing. I I, I do. Let's talk about your pitching. Uh, and I want to talk about Sonia in particular first. So you mentioned her. She had 18 wins last year, the most on your staff, really was your ace. I'm curious, did you expect her to be this high of a level both as a two-way player, pitcher, and a hitter? Or was there an aspect of her game that even surprised you? Well, like I, I think that anybody at this level, you you expect them to to do great. Uh, I know Sona, uh, come from a uh, uh, a really high elite travel ball team, uh, named the Cal Nuggets. Uh, who coaches them other than Haley Woods, uh, a great uh Cal alum, uh, student athlete who understands the game, especially as a catcher who um can can help teach pitching. Right, Sona um. Uh, probably a bit overworked last year. She was my horse with Anna going down. We didn't really have, you know, too much depth on the mound. We had three, three pitchers. So um, did she surprise me that she's that good? No, but did she surprise me? Cause we threw her that much and she did good. Yes. You know, um, she, she's someone who wants the ball every day, right? Whether it's offensively or defensively, I love having a hitting uh, pitcher uh, being able to work the lineup there. Um, but she's, <sighs> what surprises me more with her is her ability to want to get better every day, whether it's in her mind, meditation, whether it's in the weight room, whether it's socially, whether it's um, academically. I mean, we had a 3.3 GPA last, um, last fall. I mean, we're smart athletes. She's a, a, a good leader. Um, and you know, she, 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 she knows that she has area of improvement and growth. Um, and she works at those while maintaining her strengths, um, and, and just freaking came in this, this fall as this workhorse who, who will outwork anyone. Um, she's got a rise ball. She's got a drop ball. She's got a change up that if she can, uh, make her change up more consistent and, um, she's going to be someone who throws up down and change up changes uh has three different speeds you, it's just like obviously there's no one out there really like jordy ball or miranda who who can throw true three speeds with a great change up but you know it's it is hard and she came this this fall and dominated i mean when i say dominated she's she's throwing 72 we had her at 72 wow. uh, you know yeah. And, and I, I'm just so proud of her locating. She understands that we need to get better on the mound and she's leading that, those pitching, uh, that pitching staff in, in the right way. Uh, uh, Sona, uh, she's, she's gonna, she's gonna, she's gonna be a bear who's remembered for a while. She sounds like an old school player, the type of player that she wants is. to play every game, every inning, doesn't want the once if she has to throw 10 innings, she'll throw 10 innings. If she has to throw two games, she will not that you want her to do that, but that she wants to do that. That sounds like an old school mentality of the player. Is that accurate? It is accurate. She comes from a great family. Her parents are amazing. Um, she she is raised right. And um, she challenges not only uh, her herself her student athletes. She also challenges me as a coach to get me better every day. I welcome that, especially at Berkeley, right? You're supposed to, I think coaching at Berkeley is hard, right? Cause you have, you're taught in academics to challenge authority, right? You're like, you're taught to be like protest. You're taught to be like, like the norm is not the norm, like, you know? And so I love it. I, cha I, I, I embrace it. I teach them how to funnel that. And thank God I went to Cal cause not many coaches can like, embrace that type of thought right um a, a, you know an academic to bleed over into um into athletics right um but she makes 
everyone around her better. Um, I'm really impressed with um, her and uh, Coach Freeman's um, work ethic together. Um, you know, she's had five different coaches, five or four different coaches every four years. I mean, she's gone through so many coaches, coaching changes that it it is it is terrible. And when, you know, coach, coach Thorson, uh, she only could promise me one year. And I, and I was like, I tried to get her to stay, but she, she, you know, she has a hard time with, uh, her, her husband is a firefighter, right? And she raises these dogs and she breeds these dogs, uh, these carne corsos and she has her own line, right? They're champions in Westminster. And if, if your husband is gone every, every so often, there's nobody to watch the dog. You have to, you have to, you know, tends to your, your family. So, um, she can only guarantee, uh, promise me one year. And then I already had up, you know, lined up some, uh, the coaching change. And I told Sona, I said, Sona, I promise you, I'm gonna take care of you. I didn't want to tell people that she was only gonna be there for a year. Cause I hope I was hoping to, you know, hook her sure, in for sure. a while, you know, you know, but, um, you know, Amber Freeman's done a really great job. She, uh, she has, uh, Christina Thorson in her back pocket to work with as well, uh, as, as a professional and, uh, you know, them together, uh, uh, Sona and, you know, coach Freeman, uh, as a catcher pitch calling, good Lord, she can pitch call and, and chop people up. Uh, she's, you know, able to, she was able to catch some of the best in the country with Dallas. Um, you know, the, the, uh, she played under the uh, Myers uh, regime, uh, great, great mentality, softball mentality, especially pitch calling and, and pitching. Um, we've been blessed to have her. I'm, I'm glad she's a bear and, you know, I'm going to try to keep that, uh, that pitching coach forever. How do you feel of the pitchers behind Sona uh, and and in the pitching staff, the rest of the staff? Very confident. Uh, Archie's, um, you know, Archie had an injury, uh, was battled an injury all last year as well. Um, she, uh, she's, uh, you know, throwing harder than ever, uh, locating better, um, understanding how to be a pitcher instead of a thrower. You know, she's like a, uh, uh, um, you know, pitchers are are different man i don't i don't know if i could be a pitcher i would i think i'd beat myself literally up on the mound like i'd be i'd be like why are you not doing it why are you not doing it you know but um you know she is a very competitive um athlete who um comes also from a great family her parents uh from new jersey super tough make makes her you know uh build um porches and do a lot of carpentry work when she goes back I'm like don't hurt your back again when you go back there she's like I won't coach I won't but you know she's a, a hard thrower throws uh, the ball down uh, has a great change up um, and um, I'm excited for her to come back this fall uh, or excuse me this spring uh, ready to go then we got you know Tepperson and Anna Reimers uh, Te I believe in diversity not only um, you know uh, in your ethnic background, I believe in all kinds of diversity, socioeconomic, you, know, you, you can't have the same people on a team and not learn anything ranging from, you know, what I've said into, you can't have the same pitcher on the mound, right? You got to have rise ball throwers, drop ball throwers, uh, change of speed throwers. And that's what we have this year is we have a great diverse group of pitchers on the mound and, and Tepperson, man, she can change speeds with the best of them and locate, oh God, to the best of her ability. And, um, you know, Anna Reimers, uh, she's got a, a rise ball, um, uh, you know, battling coming off an injury. She's got a little, uh, a little confidence problems right now, but, uh, when she's on, uh, she can, uh, she can get a ton of swing and misses, uh, especially with, with the rise ball and the change up. Then we have, uh, two new freshman, um, athletes in, uh, Sam Rocha. Oh my God. She's like five, three, uh, throw 65. And, uh, was a, was, is a black belt in karate, very disciplined, tough, uh, nose, um, uh, athlete who doesn't care who you are. She's like, get in the box and she just works fast. And she's like, get in the box and get next one. Next one gets, you know, uh, has little person problem. And I can, I can relate to that because I'm pretty short. Right. You know, uh, you know, and so she's, uh, she's, uh, someone who the, the size of the dog in her is, is, is unreal. And then you have, uh, Shanti McDade from Texas. Um, she kind of had some, uh, you know, uh, mechanical, uh, problems going, coming into college, but, uh, the way she just 
she reminds me of Zoe Connolly, who would Zoe would just chomp her gum on the mound and also didn't care who you were, just get in the box and mow them down. Uh, that's what Ashanti uh, McDade uh, reminds me of. She has all pitches um, uh, ranging from up, down, change. Uh, and, uh, you know, she's she's someone to look out for because I think she's going to be uh, a staple in our um, on our mound as well this upcoming year. You met you. Know, you mentioned your staff, obviously, like Becca Mueller. You've talked about obviously your long assistant Amber Freeman, who you brought in, as you mentioned. Just speak to the the kind of that dynamic that you have on your staff, and what's your style as far as delegating, ver, you know, ver, versus being involved in, in different aspects of the game. Because uh, I know in talking to Mike White, that was something that he, you know, that was a big part of it when you were on his staff. He let you run the defense. He kind of. He treated you in a way, gave you a lot of information that would set you up to be a head coach down the road. So I'm curious how you handle your staff and what a Becca Mueller and Amber Freeman and, and that dynamic. Well, you know, we still also have Kylie Quico too, yeah. as uh, you know, uh, as uh, one of our other assistants as well. So I believe, and Coach White taught me this, that um, as a coach, you need to tell the athletes what to do. You need to be able to show them what to do and then get them to feel it. Okay, so those three are really important is articulating well, clearly, concisely, being able to show them. I'm a person who likes to physically show them. And that is probably one of the bigger things that I've had to cut back on as a head coach is, I mean, I don't know. I still put my cleats on. You know, I, I think a true coach puts cleats on every day. If I need to get in and take some ground balls and get them to, to realize a 40-year-old person can go get that ball that you don't think that you can get, you have a problem, okay? And so uh, I, I believe that with my coaches, uh, all of them. And if you can't physically show them, then you need to really use film, right? All, at, maybe not all, but most, a majority of athletes are visual learners, okay? So being able to show them, I'll take some ground balls on myself, I'll go throw, and then, you know, Maybe I compare them to not me or whoever, whoever their idols are, right? Being able to show them and then putting them in situations for them to get to feel that, okay? And um, Coach Freeman, um, uh, Coach Becca, and Coach Cuico, uh, all three of them are fantastic in being clear, being able to show them uh, with film, um, and I'll, I'll make them, I'll make them come in and I'll say, get in here and hit. And they'll come in and hit, and the girls get pissed, right? It's like I, they don't. I don't think I ever wanted a coach to show me up, and we're not showing them up. But we're like, you know, one time I'll never forget this: that Coach White, we're having bunning, and uh, our girls aren't bunning well, right? We're in Oregon, and this is like my first year, and I'm like, oh god, this is bad. I'm like looking at this, and he's getting pissed, right? And he's like, Coach Spencer, and I'm like, me? He's like, get in there. Can you put a butt down? I'm like, oh my God, I better do this. You know, I better do this. And I go in and I put a butt down and, you know, he, he said, see, you know, and then I, I, I'm, I'm cut from his cloth, you know, uh, and I'll do that to my, my coaches. Uh, they might not like it sometimes, but at, you know, I think they do. They, they're competitive, man. I'll tell you that there is no one more competitive on my staff. Actually, all three of them are pretty damn competitive, but Becca Mueller, is really competitive like like to the detriment of her and I love it because it does remind me of me sometimes where I'm like uh she doesn't like to be um not wrong but like just so wants to she wants to she refuses to lose and I love it you have to be that way yeah. in our game uh with confidence and um you know I I I think they're all three of them uh you know it was it's hard sometimes you know hiring young but um, I, I think it's worked out for the best of us is, is they're very relatable to the student athletes, Kylie Cuico, man, she's like the glue of our program. I mean, she's like, uh, she's Polynesian kind of laid back, understands who uh, like, you know, again, diversity. If I have a ton of Chelsea Spencers on staff, high anxiety, it's just going to freak everybody out. I already freak people out. Right. You know, I have like, you know, my things, you know, and so, um, you know, we have, you know, uh, Amber is great because, you know, when she's pitch calling, her and Kylie kind of sit next to each other and they're like, you know, 
uh, you know, talking about hitters and, you know, Coach Becca's kind of off during, during defense and I'm kind of, you know, around. And I, I think it's a very good balanced staff because, you know, I can't hire the same, right? I have to hire my weak, my weak parts, right? Why, why hire my strength when I'm really strong in that? And, and that's huge, right? So I gotta, I gotta hire what I'm not good at. And sometimes, you know, that's patience, glue, right? Coach Freeman is also like that. Like there, there's some of the girls are strung out and they go out to Coach Freeman. She's like, "What are you talking about?" And that's what you need, right? Because if Tatum, Tatum and Zaldo come to me, she's like, "What are you doing?" Or "What am I doing?" I'm like, "What are you doing?" You know, it's not gonna work out. You know, so yeah. Um, you know, it's uh, I think we're very balanced. Um. Uh, Coach Becca is. Uh, she's gonna be one of the big time coaches probably coming out soon for for a job. I'm sure of it. She 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 has high expectation and high goals to want to go out there and and be her own coach too. So uh, I see nothing but great things in her future. And um, you know, but I do like to. I think those coaches who are in the World Series, those coaches who are in Super Regionals, they always have the same staff year in and year out. Consistency. And for the student athletes, um, uh, being able to understand who we are. And I, that's what I want. I want to be able to create a, a staff who stays for at least a while. And I mean, I put in eight years with Coach White and, you know, we built something, you know, and I want that. So I think we're on our way uh, as a staff to um, to be to be there. Uh, I, I'm excited for this year. I can ramble. I'm sorry. I keep talking. But, uh, man, these uh, – <laughs> These, the beauty uh, of the I'm podcast, gonna... you can. That's the beauty of it. <laughs> uh, you know, Coach Becca, Coach Freeman, and Coach Quico, I think we're a good staff and very well balanced. And, you know, you know, strengths and weaknesses are in a good spot. Well, you mentioned Coach White. So I would be remiss if I didn't ask what was your what was going through your mind as he made that Texas made that run uh on the road, what starting in Seattle, winning that regional, beating Arkets on the Supers, and then getting to the national championship series for the first time in his career. Cause you were there, you've been in that dugout with him, had some tough losses, come so close with some great teams. What was it like seeing him uh, make that run and get to his first championship series? Oh man. I was so happy. Like I, I could get emotional about it. Cause I know, you know, he's worked so hard throughout his life. I mean, the guy has never not been to a super regional taking over an Oregon team who was like, I don't know. My numbers might be off slightly, but like 16 and 32. And he went to a super regional the next year. I mean, obviously he was best. Uh, he was blessed with Jessica Moore, Samantha Pappas, Caitlin Howard, and Allie Berger, who was his freshman core. I mean, they, they were a really good core. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, he's a genius, right? He's a, he's someone who deserves it. I mean, I've been in a national championship as a player for three years out of my four years. And I know it takes very special moments to get you there. For example, we are playing Oklahoma in the world series. Patty Gasso calls a two strike, two ball, two strike bunt. Okay. We're back. Our corners are back. She puts it down. It's rolling foul. Gwen picks it up. Gwen Speckis. It's, it's foul. Okay. She gets it up, overthrows it. Umpire calls fair. Okay. And, and, and they score and they get a little mo. We were up two to zero, right? We lose that game. Things like that happen. You look at this last year at, at Texas, what happens? That first baseman looks to second, overthrows it. The Oklahoma State kid yeah. overthrows it, goes to the wall. They score. Things like that happen for you to get into the championship series. And that's it. And we were never blessed with that luck. It, it is the Spencer luck. My dad always says it, Chelsea, you have the Spencer luck. So him, me having him, having me on the staff, I gave coach white bad luck, but he let me go. Oh. And it, that's what it is. It's gotta be that. That's what I'm thinking. That's a little um, harsh there. That's a little harsh. You know what? It's okay. I'm genetically flawed at times. My, my mom and dad said, and that's okay. But, um, uh, you know, he says, uh, genetically flawed, meaning we have bad luck. So, um, well, he, he gets the overthrow, uh, they score, they get in and Oh God, we, I was so happy for him. In fact, we were, I was in the delivery room. Uh, uh my baby, my second baby was coming and we had the laptop in, uh, coach white on the 
coach, we had to do it. Coach White on the screen. Uh, we're like yelling and, you know, you know, making sure we're watching him go. Uh, very, very happy for him and Coach Singleton and Megan, right? Um, you know, Coach Singh is one of my best friends out there and he's from Oakland, California as well. Uh, and, um, you know, I, there is, you know, there is some things that do happen to get you there, but freak, man, they, I mean, they were, Oh, and six in, in the, in yeah. the Florida tournament. Clearwater, you know, it's yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. It's like, you know, he, that dude works his butt off. He outworks other coaches. Um, and it's, uh, it was, it was great to see, uh, his, his, uh, his work pay off for sure. I gotta take exception with your dad's comment. You went to the World Series what three times? You did you win a net? You were you on the national title team or eight? Yeah, right? it's all fun, man. Hey, come on, it's all come fun. on. That's how, that's how we that's how we roll. You know, if he ain't picking on me, he don't love me. All right, all right. I'm gonna defend you. I'm defending you here. I don't. I don't want to get. You know, you've had a pretty successful uh, deal here. Yeah. A lot of success. You know, uh, yeah. but you mentioned Megan Bartlett. She took over for you when you came to Cal. Um, and Mike White told us a good story about he knew that that was your dream job. And so, yeah. you know, when, you know, and so he was thinking, you know, once that situation developed and you got the job, you know, he brought in Megan and what she brings and she had to kind of take through the same responsibilities that you did. Uh, now, as a result of her time at Texas and with being Mike, Mike in that run, now she's in the Pac-12 at Arizona State with Jimmy Kalaitis as her assistant. Like, I know, because I asked her about it, like, you, I know you two don't know each other that well. I'm sure you cross paths, but you know pretty much everybody around you, it feels like. Uh, what is that like when, when you saw that, that Megan Bartley was basically uh, now in the Pac-12 joining you there? Well, I have a secret weapon. Uh, Coach Mueller coached for her. Correct, yes. You know, you know, so I have I have Coach Coach Mueller and Coach Mitch also uh, – Mitch uh, Roberts uh, had him uh, my first year as well. So we, it is, it's weird. We don't really know each other, but we have a lot of, uh, you know, middle, uh, you know, inner, inner uh, friends who are in our inner circle. So, um, you know, it's going to be a grind. She's a great coach, especially with Jimmy over there. You know, Jimmy's one of the best recruiters, hitting coaches out there. And, um, uh, you know, I, I think that, um, it only is going to make our conference stronger, right? It's, uh, you know, uh, Trish leaving and that whole, uh, you know, you know, Arizona state, you know, transfers that, you know, kind of went out there is it, it hurt them. You know, I didn't want to see that. Uh, I, I, I believe in the PAC 12. I think the PAC 12 is still the conference of champions. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think that, uh, ASU hired a good one in, uh, Megan Bartlett and, uh, you know, coming from coach white, I know, I know the the pressure he puts on his assistants to 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 get them to that next level to to get them successful, right? I mean, Coach Al uh, started coaching with Coach White too, uh, her first year uh, at Oregon. So um, you know he's got a lot of fingers in the game out there, and his his tree limbs, uh, you know, spread far with the the the, the coaches that are um, under him that yet yeah, he's uh, uh, mentored throughout the way and. I know that I'm going to have to out coach her too, right? I'm going to have to out coach her because I know, uh, you know, she has a great idea of pitching. Uh, I mean, the freaking, I love New Zealand style pitchers and and she hired uh, Jeremy. Uh, I'm blanking on his last Jeremy name. Manley. A, Jeremy Manley. Jeremy yeah. Manley. Yeah. Um, he's a Kiwi. He, he believes in the same things I do. And I'm, I'm, I'm guaranteed that their pitching staff is going to be strong with, uh, with him at it. And, uh, you know, he's a, uh, that, that staff is a good staff. Um, uh, and, uh, yeah, we're, we're, hopefully, you know, we're going to bring our best game against them. You're hosting him week two in conference play. I asked Mike White, because Mike White told me he shared that he has Cal scores on his phone. He keeps track of how you're yeah. doing, obviously, rooting for you. And that, but he says now he's going to have a bit of a conflict when Cal and Arizona State play. What do you think he's going to be thinking when Cal and Arizona State play? What does he do? Is he is he rooting for someone? What is he rooting for? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, like, I mean, you don't give eight years to someone and not be their favorite. I mean, everybody has a favorite kid out there, don't you? Right? Like, you know, everybody wow. can say they don't, but you know, this smile and and when do I you call feel him, the experience, your time should over should take. Jimmy and Megan's loyalty that should that your eight years adds up to more than Jimmy and Megan there that's what you, if, 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 all right is that what Even you should I do think I do think Jimmy is his favorite they would go out and fishing trips <laughs> they would go out and fishing trips and not invite me I'd be like 
well what mm. about me they're like oh 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 you don't like the water right and i'm like mm, mm -mm. okay all right so i do think uh -oh. secretly jimmy's his favorite but i do think that for as much time as i gave him that that i should be his favorite if that makes sense Wow, I didn't know about the fishing story. That's uh you know, that's okay that's, though. You know, guys gotta do what guys gotta do. They, they sometimes they don't need women out there, and, and that's okay because I don't really like fishing deep sea like that enough anyway. But I feel um, like there's gonna be a Mike White story shared that weekend at some point. I don't know if it's during right. one of the lineup card exchanges. I don't know how, but there I feel there's someone's gonna bring up a Mike White story there at some point there when the handshakes are doing or something. I mean, Mike White is there's enough stories out there that we all know of Mike White stories anyway. So, uh, you know, you know, I, 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 I am cut from his cloth. So I, I'm pretty sure that if, let's see how many years has he been in the game? Um, he's been in the game for since 20, 2010. Sounds so like about, it's, about been right. 20, it's been 13 years now. Uh, is that right? I think that's that right. there's going to be enough stories. If I'm in the game for 13 years as a head coach, there's going to be enough stories about me. So, um, you know, were you, were you surprised? Oh, you know, coach White, yeah. you know, coach White was an assistant at Oregon while I was a player at Cal. No, I did not know that part. Yeah. An interesting fact. Did you, were you surprised when he, uh, for better or for worse, flipped out in the uh, big 12 tournament and that kind of went viral or no, you were know, you not surprised? I, 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 when I say coach Becca is a very competitive, there, there's nobody more competitive than Mike White, hands down. And, um, you know, I respect him. I, I, I think that sometimes, uh, in life, uh, you, you make a decision and then you got to deal with the consequences and, and, and that's it. And, and I have it as a meme on my phone. I mean, sometimes I've wanted to do it, you know what I mean? Like, you know, and, 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 and I'm not, condoning it by any means but you know you know he had to deal with the repercussions and um you know but i i had i didn't lose any love for him that day uh i still love him he's my mentor i call him when i need it and um uh i love i love him uh because he's just like my dad in terms of tough love i mean he's the toughest um, guy, I wanted to say some other choice words, but he's one of the toughest guys out there to, to play for, to work for, um, to, um, probably cause he had a, uh, uh, he, he owned a plate against sports for, I don't know, 18 years. Uh, he's a businessman, tough businessman, and he has standards and, uh, sometimes umpires don't live up to standards. Sometimes oh. your coaches don't live up to standards. Right. And so, you know, he prepared me in life. Um, he's someone who I will never forget. And when he, when he came out with, you know, showing his, um, his frustration, you know, um, it is what it is, right? But it and, showed the passion you know, he's got. He's going to defend his player, he, right? Yes, and I'm assuming man, that's why I, you two, I, right, passion. That, yes, that's what, I, you know. Yeah. That that was pretty. Okay. That was the thing that took away from that uh, there. Um, last th a couple things before I let you go. This year, the Pac-12 is going to have a Pac-12 tournament uh, at Arizona. What's your thoughts on having the conference tournament? And does that change anything as far as, you know, instead of now knowing that you have a regular season finale, now you're going to have a Pac-12 tournament at the end? I can't say I am old school enough times. I'm probably you know, the only coach in the country that doesn't believe in conference tournaments. Um I believe uh, the conference champion should be the conference champion. I think your body of work should show uh, what it's all about. Um, I don't like it to de devalue that conference ring that you just grinded day in and day out for. Um, you know, and I understand it. I like I like the conference tournament because it gives you if you're participating in in super in regionals or in the postseason that feeling that if you mess up. That if you mess up, you can mess up once and then go into postseason and feel like, okay, we didn't do it right this way and kind of change your your pro your process. Um, I like that fact, but man, and I you know it kind of gets you ready for the postseason. But that's one of the things the coaches that I've talked to, other coaches have told me that one thing they do like is 
they feel like it's a way to get pressure for the players in a ter- in a postseason setting to get you set for a regional. That's one thing. And the other thing is to improve on the resume for the Pac-12 because that you know, as you know, you all feel like you're the best conference in the sport, and we could get ev- almost everybody in the field. And they feel that the conference tournament could benefit that because of okay. teams that maybe are on the bubble can get more wins. Plus, it's more exposure. Uh, because you know, and and help the league from that standpoint. Because you saw the league had a banner tournament last year with Oregon State making it to the World Series, UCLA to the World Series, uh, Arizona to the World Series. I mean, you deal with it on a daily basis. But there was a lot of pride in the league, and I think there was a bit of a chip on the shoulder. And I feel they feel like the Pac-12 tournament could maybe help that, even though. And you've played in it. You're you're right. It does, you know, the, the conference tournament kind of does take away a little bit from the regular season, but that's kind of the college athletics. I guess that that's the way it is now, I guess. And we have to have it because of that. And that yeah. and that's what I'm saying. It's like, yes, like I'm saying conference tournaments as a whole, not just yeah, yeah, I agree. the yeah. Pac-12. You know what I mean? Like, like we started to move towards the conference tournament. I get it. It's, 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 it's fun, you know? Um, and we, we do have to be, uh, we should have it to compete with other conference tournaments uh, at that same time. Okay. That's fine. Uh, but I'm from old school. I, I mean, I play, I mean, I, I, you know, you asked probably Kelly, I, she can be like, oh, you know, uh, we're going to say, you know, politically correctly that we're going to, Oh, we like the conference tournament is going to help us. But man, we fought out for years. Uh, you were the last one holding out. You were the last one yes. to conference, right? Uh, of, man, of the major you know, conferences. Yeah. I mean, I mean, these, yeah, you know, it is what it is. And, you know, sometimes in my old schoolness um, that I need to change, right? You need to evolve, right? You need to evolve. And and I needed to, and we, 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 we put it in and, you know, it can help some people, right? It, obviously it can help some people get better seeds. Um, those are the things that, you know, you got to really look at is like, as how, if you're hot right now, and then you can get a, a, a higher seed, Um but I mean, the selection committee is going to do what selection committees are going to do anyway. Right. I mean, there was some questionable things in the last couple of years that like that, you know, they're going to just do it anyway. So, you know, it is what it is. It, it does help right. our sport, it helps our conference. Like, you know, it gives us a, a, a tournament feel before the tournament. Love it. Um, does, does it, does it, does it drive me to the core to want to be old school? Yeah. Like I want to have a conference champion to be like, I won the conference and the whole body of work instead of, uh, you know what? I think this, if, if we can make our automatic qualifier, the conference champion and not the tournament champion, I would be okay a little bit more. Yeah. I've heard that from the other sports. I don't know if that'll happen, but you're right. That's, I know some people have pushed for that. uh, And that could be, that's a whole, that's probably above our pay rate. That's a whole other topic for another day. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on in college athletics that may impact like those type of decisions. We're not even going to get into here because we've, uh, we just, just too long. We could have a different podcast, a lengthier podcast on all those topics. Uh, So instead I'll let you go on this. Give me a couple keys for your team that you have to do. If you do blank, you will be able to accomplish your goals. If we pitch well and play defense behind our pitchers, I'm confident that our offense is has enough threat to ruin some people's day. Okay. And 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 we don't I I don't I don't believe in the have tos or the need tos. We get to play, right? We get to be able to be on the mound and to have that mentality of uh of just give me your best freaking game every day, whether, whether it's your, uh, you know, your best, day, like get whatever your best is that day, I want it, give it to me. And being able to like, to commit to that a day in and day out is tough. It's tough. Um, there's times when I don't want to, where I don't want to go to work either. Right. Uh, mentally, but you, you gotta go, you gotta go do it. I don't want to go parent right now out there, but I got to, right. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know? so um, it is, uh, if, if we pitch well, just like any other, any other, uh, school, any other, any other team, if we pitch well and we play defense and we hit to our best ability, well, it's, we're going to ruin some people's day out there. I agree. And I know what you mean. Like, I don't want to say goodbye to you. I like talking to you for like, for, we could talk for hours, but you have a life. I, talk I, to you forever. <laughs> I know, but you have a life. I don't, you do have life. You have important things to do, obviously. Uh, but we always appreciate you coming on with us and being honest with us and just talking to us. Uh, 
about your program and obviously just topics in softball. You're always fantastic or one of our favorites. And uh, thank you for always uh, taking the time to talk to us. Good luck this season and uh, we'll be in touch and uh, we'll talk soon. Thank you, Eric. And uh, I hope to see you out in, in Berkeley one day covering our game. Uh, I'll bring you out from the sunny Florida to, to bring you into the, to the San Francisco fog, the gloom and uh, you know, come out and watch us live and, I just appreciate what you're doing for our sport. And uh, as always, go Bears.